Hello everyone, I'm Bruce Marshall and let me congratulate you for having gotten through the first chapter in accounting. You may have read that accounting is called the language of business and like any language it's more beneficial if you have good grammar and understand the mechanics of that grammar. That's what I want to do right now is take you through a PowerPoint slideshow and I'll also do a drawing later that is going to illustrate some of those foundational concepts and that framework that needs to become second nature. Think of it like when you took your first math class and you had to, to learn the memorization of multiplication. You need to understand how that works but sometimes it's easier if you go ahead and memorize it once you have that, that understanding and then the future concepts are easier. Accounting is not any different. We'll get into more advanced uh, transactions and accounts and it's going to be important that you have this as second nature to you. So let's get to the PowerPoint show. This video lecture is going to start out by talking about the five basic types of accounts. And it looks like I've got a little bit of a hiccup on uh, the way some of my uh, definitions are going to enter in here, but let's go ahead and get started. On the left hand side of the screen, you see the five accounts here assets, liabilities, equity, revenue, and expenses. And we'll define those assets being what is owned by the business, liabilities, what is owed by the business, equity, ownership contributions, and the cumulative net income or net loss since the start of the business. And many times you see it, it takes money to make money, so those are the initial contributions. And then we'll talk about the closing process and how that cumulative net income or net loss impacts the equity account. Revenue we're defining as the inflows of assets during the period and expenses we're defining as the using up of assets or perhaps you didn't actually use an asset or or spend an asset but it would be a recognition of a liability for a future expense to be paid that's what's called an accrual and let's talk about those five basic accounts the basic types of accounts and their normal balance assets normally have a debit balance Liabilities normally have a credit balance. Equity accounts normally have a credit balance. Revenue accounts normally have a credit balance. And expense accounts normally have a debit balance. Now what do these words debit and credit mean? By themselves they really are, don't have any meaning. They take on meaning relative to what you're talking about. So if you're, if you're talking about an asset, you, th you then have to memorize that if I want to increase that asset balance, I'm going to debit that account. If I want, conversely, if I want to decrease it, I'll credit that, and I'll get to that on the next slide. And same with liabilities. If I want to increase it, I will credit it. And equity, if I want to increase it, I will credit it. So here we have what do debiting and crediting do to each type of account. Assets, debit to increase, credit to decrease. Liabilities, credit to increase, debit to decrease. Equity, credit to increase, debit to decrease. Revenue, credit to increase, debit to decrease. <coughs> and expenses, debit to increase, and credit to decrease. These, these are things that are like flashcards in multiplication. You just flat out need to memorize it. There's a thing called a T account in accounting and basically a T account is nothing more than a, than a model. It's a picture of what is happening inside that account. Accounting systems are relational databases and you increase and decrease and there's activity that goes into that bucket if you will. So think of the T account as a picture of the bucket of an account. And normally you will set it up with a title and then the other thing to memorize is that debits are on the left side of the T account, credits are on the right side of the T. The abbreviations DR and CR are carry forward from Old English. Um, actually it's a Latin word if you want to look up the word Latin, or excuse me, the word debit. In, uh, it has its origins in Latin, and which was the uh, Luca Pacioli, the founder of accounting, uh, was an Italian businessman in the 1400s. So we have him to thank for all of this stuff we're learning now.
an asset, as I said, has a debit balance, and your beginning balance could be a credit if it is a liability. Remember the previous slide, what the, what the normal balance of an account could be a debit if it's asset, or credit if it's a liability. And then the debit activity during the month is depicted on the left-hand side of the T. The, the credit activity is depicted on the right-hand side of the T. And then you'll get down to the ending balance. It's either going to be a debit or a credit, uh, depending on the type of account or on the, the net of this activity of the debits and credits. So let's do a little demonstration with a supplies inventory. Now I could put a little pop quiz in and ask you what is supplies inventory? What does it sound like? It sounds like it's an asset. It's what the business owns. And that's, that's right. It's an asset. And then I would say what is the normal balance of an asset of supplies inventory? Normally it should have a debit balance. And therefore, if I want to increase the balance, I will debit that account. If I want to decrease it, I will credit it. And I'm saying that debit to increase, credit to decrease because it's an asset, because its normal balance is a debit balance. So let's take a look at what happens in the T account with our supplies inventory. Let's assume a beginning balance of 18500 We purchased some new supplies during the period. And when I say during the period, I could be talking about a, a day, a week, a month, a quarter, a year. And in accounting, the period is normally normally a month and you'll hear the term closing the books and that's what we're going to do an illustration on in a little bit closing the books is done to close them out for that period and normally in accounting the smallest or shortest period is one month you could close your books every day if you wanted to but nobody has that kind of resource or time and it's not beneficial to do so. So normally you wait till a month and certainly on a quarterly basis when you're doing three closes, three months in a row, and then you report that quarterly activity. So here we're saying we purchase new supplies during the period and we'll just say it's during the month. Now if we use supplies out of the storeroom into our production for whatever purpose that may be, but if I used up supplies I want to decrease the balance and therefore I have to credit it. And then what you see is the ending balance will be the net of that, 18500 plus 500 minus 800 will get you down to your ending balance of 18200 The five basic, account, basic accounts, remember, we had assets, liabilities, equity, revenues, and expenses. Now, if I want to put them into two buckets, they have to go in one or the other. It's like if all human beings have to be put into either male or female, that's what we can do with our accounts, our five basic types. The assets, liabilities, and equity will go into a bucket we'll call the permanent accounts. Those types of accounts make up the accounting equation. And this is something you learned in your introductory chapter. Assets equals liabilities plus equity. The reason they're called permanent accounts is you don't close them out at the end of the period. So that may then lead you to the next category of our two categories, the revenues and expenses, which are called the temporary accounts. And there's, there are several other names that are used, nominal, period, or one of my least favorite uh, names is, is revenue accounts because we're talking about revenues or expenses so I don't like calling expenses revenue accounts per se but I've seen those those uh, terms used in the past temporary accounts as I said are closed to equity specifically the retained earnings account which is a permanent account at the end of each period now in your introductory chapter, they talked about a sole proprietorship and just basically that person's capital account. But when you talk about corporations, that's when you get into the concept of retained earnings. Now how do those five basic accounts constitute the balance sheet and the income statement? And the balance sheet and the income statement are two of the four major financial statements that any business has to publish and I'll say any publicly traded business has to publish. The other two kinds that you won't get into uh, in these, these introductory concepts, we'll get into it in our next, um, next course, 
are the statement of cash flows and the statement of changes in owner's equity or statement of owner's equity. So the, but the two biggies are balance sheet and income statement. And as you probably uh, thought when you looked at the accounting equation, that is the balance sheet, the assets which equal the liabilities plus the equity. So when you present that in a format, uh, it's, it's a snapshot of your business according to how many assets it has and what it owes and what the net residual ownership is in those assets. And that's as of a point in time. The revenue and the expenses, specifically revenue less expenses, will get down to a bottom line net income and that constitutes the income statement. Another way to look at that is just to say balance sheet is an as of date, a snapshot in time. And that's when you take that picture and you say, how, much, how many assets do I have? What are my liabilities? Who do I owe money to? Who do I have an obligation to? And what's my equity? Remember, equity constitutes both those original capital contributions made by your owners and then the cumulative net income or net loss since you started business. And for any period of time, I will be able to say, what was my revenue during that period? What were my expenses during that period? Did revenue exceed expenses? And if so, I'll have net income. Conversely, revenue may be less than expenses, which will give you a net loss for the period. And how do we define revenue? Remember back, it, revenue was the inflow of assets and expenses were the using up of assets in a basic definition. Okay, at this point, I'm gonna pause the PowerPoint and move toward a drawing illustration for you. Okay, bear in mind that I have a stylus, so I apologize if it looks like a, um, a uh, chicken on the, on the screen. But we're going to start with a basic illustration of a business that has a contribution that was made of $500 of cash. And so they start out with cash and, and their assets and $500 of owner's equity. So I am in balance. My assets equals my liabilities plus my equity. And for simplicity, we'll assume there are no liabilities. Now during the period, let's say this is a consulting business, we went out and had a, a um, consulting gig, if you will, and recognized revenue. And let's say that revenue was $2,000. That $2,000, the customer paid us in cash, so cash was increased by $2,000. We also did some advertising, and remember from the previous illustration that advertising is an expense, and if I want to increase an expense, I have to debit it. So let's say we paid $400 for advertising, which I paid cash, and so to decrease cash, I have to credit it for that $400. So let's say these two transactions constitute my activity during the period. So during the period, so my income statement, remember, I had revenue of $2,000. I subtract my expenses of $400. My bottom line was $1,600 of net income. So I expect that my assets increased during the period because I made money, my revenue of $2,000 exceeded my expenses of $400. So what does it mean to close the books? Remember we talked about how balance sheet accounts are permanent accounts, income statement accounts are temporary accounts. So these are my temporary accounts, revenue and expenses. If I want to close out revenue, revenue normally has a credit balance, I'll have to debit it for that amount, $2,000. The closing entry, when I make that debit to my revenue, what's happening in the closing process, there's a credit being made of $2,000 to my owner's equity, specifically retained earnings. Consequently, I have to close out my expenses. So there's a $400 credit closing entry that I make to expenses. That $400 has to then be debited to my owner's equity in order for that entry to balance. Debits must always equal credits. Now you can see at this point, I've got a zero balance in expenses. I also have a zero balance in revenue because they've been closed out to owner's equity. 
And remember earlier we talked about the balance sheet as a snapshot in time and the income statement was for a period of time. So now after I've closed for the, let's assume this is a month, I had a beginning balance of cash at the beginning of the month. My net activity in cash was to increase it by $2,100. Remember 2000 of revenue, or excuse me, not 2100 1600 2000 of revenue, $400 of expenses. Now I strike a balance in cash for the end of the end of the period. I am at $2,100 ending. Consequently, or I should say, and so in owner, owner's equity, I started out with $500. I had a net increase of $1,600 to end with $2,100 of owner's equity. And obviously I balance and that is or constitutes my ending balance sheet. Okay, to finish out our illustration, we had our balance sheet is as of income statement for a period of time and our five types of accounts, assets, liabilities, equity, revenue, and expenses, and how those constitute the balance sheet and income statement. This is a timeline illustration that I talked about where the balance sheet is a point in time, a snapshot. So at the end of the period at the at the beginning of the period, excuse me, we could take a snapshot of our assets, liabilities, and equity. During the period, during this year, we would say what was our revenue earned during the year, what were the expenses incurred during the year, and did we have a bottom line net income or net loss? That net income or net loss is closed to retained earnings and that shows how retained earnings will grow just like assets grew to to match that growth in retained earnings and of course you can have liabilities growing but remember the equation has to stay in balance assets have to equal liabilities plus equity this is going to illustrate how that equation comes together with net income closing to retain earnings. The other thing that happens to retain earnings, and we won't get into this in this course, but our dividend transactions to our shareholders, but retain earnings is part of owner's equity as are preferred in common stock. If you're a publicly traded company, those are the monies you got from the market when people invested in you. And then to close it out, there's your accounting equation, assets equals liabilities plus owner's equity. Thank you.